section was dialectical journals and I really really liked these as well. From each chapter um, she had pulled out a quote that was just kind of powerful that you could actually respond to. So like from chapter one, this quote says, he had become a man without a country. The land of his birth was at war with America. Yet after 35 years here, he was still prevented by law from becoming an American citizen. He was suddenly a man with no rights who looked exactly like the enemy. And so they have like half the page here to respond to that question. And they don't just have to come up with something to say. Um, there are six different options that they could start their sentence with. So you have sentence starters. So you can either start with, this reminds me of, this made me wonder, I think that this will happen next because they can predict um, this quote means, they can explain the quote, um, if I were whatever character I would do this, or they can evaluate like this seems fair because, or this seems unfair because, um, so this was really useful for a lot of my like English learners or just students that struggle to write and they just struggle to get started um, because before we even started the activity I would tell them okay you have 30 seconds to highlight the sentence starter how are you going to respond to this quote and so first they would do that and write it down so it's it's not like they had nothing written. Sometimes you walk around and the student just has nothing written for like five minutes. So at least they would have a beginning and somewhere to jump off of. So these were really cool and I had some good responses from students as well. Sometimes they didn't quite fully grasp the quote, but a lot of times they had very good responses. Some of the activities were really good as well. Um, this one is a newspaper project where you'd have the front page of an American newspaper versus the front page of a Japanese newspaper the day after Pearl Harbor. And my students are obsessed with World War II. Every middle schooler I've ever met is obsessed with World War II. So when I teach eighth grade history, they're always asking like, when are we gonna do World War II? And I'm like, 10th grade. So got a little ways to go. Um, and then the sixth graders are very interested in it as well. They really like learning about Pearl Harbor. So we took a day or two and actually looked at the covers of newspapers from, you know, December 7th or December 8th, 1941. So they knew their dates really well. They had to put the date on their newspapers and they had to draw a picture. And a lot of times the pictures would be the same, right? But they would have different headlines and different quotes. One would be positive and one would be, one would be negative. One would be a celebration, one would be a catastrophe. So this was a really interesting activity to do and the students loved getting into that. Another activity that wasn't in this curriculum but I found online the evacuation notice that they would put up in Japanese American neighborhoods and the evacuation notice had really interesting language because it would say um, aliens and non-aliens must all evacuate, for example. And so we would look at that. Why would they say aliens and non-aliens and talk about what an alien is? Okay, that's someone who's not from this country or who's not a citizen. So a non-alien then would be a citizen, right? And so why would they not use the word citizen? Why would it be weird to say citizens and aliens must evacuate? And then students would kind of have to discuss that and wrestle with that like because Americans don't do that to their citizens that would cause too much suspicion and people would think that that sounded really strange and you can't just evacuate citizens so we did a lesson on like word choice and connotation and euphemisms they really like the word euphemism and we looked through that evacuation notice for euphemisms where you know the government is trying to make something sound different than it really is. And they were very interested in that. I also had some information about Fred Korematsu and we did that kind of towards the end. I didn't want to confuse them and um, make them think that like Fred was part of our story because they they were having a little bit of trouble like keeping everything straight. But since I'm primarily a history teacher, I really liked to do lessons about the context and what was really going on. Um, when we got to the section in the book about how um, Jeannie and her family are concerned about moving back into Southern California society because of all the propaganda that the United States has been uh, pushing through, you know, newspapers and magazines that's anti-Japanese, we looked at actual anti-Japanese propaganda and so they saw Dr. Seuss's anti-Japanese cartoons and they were like what this oh my gosh <laughs> like my whole childhood is ruined like they walked out just shaking their heads like thanks a lot Mrs. Forbes you just ruined my childhood 
Sorry. Now they can't read Dr. Seuss the same way anymore, but they loved hearing about that and they were shocked. They were shocked. They could not believe that people had portrayed Japanese this way. So this whole book and this whole unit really builds empathy and builds critical thinking skills and helps them to recognize what racism really is. Like I hate, I will not allow my students to, for some reason they think it's funny to be like, that's racist. They do not do that in my class. After one person does and I destroy them, no one ever does it again. And then, you know, in these things, they'll say, like, that's racist. I'm like, yes, yes, it is. That's why we're learning about this. And this is what you need to be able to recognize. Another thing that was interesting for our students is that we are just a few miles from the Santa Anita racetrack. And that was where a lot of Japanese Americans and Japanese were held before being sent off to the camps, um, before being sent off to Manzanar, a lot of them. And so, you know, this is something that occurred in our backyard that is really close to us. And I've had students whose parents or whose grandparents actually were sent to some of these camps. And so for us, it really actually impacts our our history and, and our culture now. Okay, I'm trying to kind of go a little bit quicker through these things now. We did a few character analysis. Um, worksheets and those were really cool to kind of compare like mama versus papa and woody and how different people reacted one theme that that we noticed through the book is that like it was so nice to have kids in the camp because the kids were so adaptable and they were able to like make games out of things and kind of um still be happy in spite of where they were and for the parents you know it was of course so stressful and just so awful but sometimes having kids in the mix just makes things more bearable and more enjoyable. And so, um, you know, having that conversation kind of made the sixth graders feel good. There are a couple of really great language worksheets. Um, editing, they can edit an essay. They recognize active or passive. Um, text structure, whether things are cause and effect or chronological order, compare and contrast. Uh, this was a really, really great worksheet. And one thing that I love is that she always adds the metacognition. So you have to answer the questions, but then write down your metacognition. And so now my students know metacognition means, how do you know? How did you get to this answer? One of the worksheets was, uh, it provides quotes and then it asks you, is this a simile, a metaphor, or personification? And so they circle which one it is, and then they have to explain why. Like, this is a simile because it says, like a cloud. Or this is personification because it attributes human attributes to something that is non-human. So that was really good. I love that it has the metacognitive aspect to all of these worksheets. She also adds some writing prompts and then some nonfiction um, passages, which are great. I mean, I had a lot of my own nonfiction kind of like historical context type of things to add in already. So I didn't use those as much and we ran out of time. We literally finished the last chapter the day before school got out. So I didn't even have time to do a writing prompt. But next year, what I'm going to do is have students write about their own family history. So write a narrative about something that happened to their mom or their dad or their grandparents and go ask a family member about a cool story that happened to them. So that was one of the things that stood out to us in this book is um, we watched interviews of the author and she said that she never ever talked about her time in Manzanar. She never mentioned it to her husband for the first 15 years that they were married. She just kept that in. And so, you know, we commented, all around us there are probably people that have these amazing stories that because they've never been asked they've just never told them so who knows what would happen if we went and asked our grandma to tell us something that happened to her when she was in college or high school or when she was a kid or what happened to your uncle when he was a kid and so that's what I'm going to do next year when I build this into my pacing this year our whole pacing was so different our entire curriculum is so different so it's really hard to figure out how to work this in, but next year um, I'm really going to protect this time that I have for far Farewell to Manzanar. We also live close enough to LA that we can take a field trip to the Japanese American National Museum, and so I'm working with them to take our kids there as well, and they have an amazing, amazing exhibit that is all about the Japanese internment, and there's like a re creation of a barracks that you can go in and pictures and objects and so I think we're going to do an object tour because I think that really connects to history and it would be just such an amazing experience. So now that we've gone through it once, now um, next year I really want to add a few more things and make it even better. So 
that was just one reason why I wanted to make a video about this and share it so that you can learn from what we did and then maybe start as if this is your second year already. You've already got some advice about it. You already know how it went. Again, timing is a big thing. I don't know how much time every teacher would have for this novel. Um, whether or not students can get a copy of their own and read it at home, that really affects how much time you need for things. Um, if your district is not so strict on the Lexile level, you may read this when they're a little bit older rather than in sixth grade because it, it was fairly difficult content for them to wrestle with. It, this is not an easy book and the vocabulary level was kind of beyond what most of my students read. But for a lot of my students, this was the one book that they read cover to cover this year. Like they never actually finished another book in sixth grade at all. And yeah, it takes a long time, but that's that's life. It takes a while to read books. It takes some perseverance. It takes, you know, there's gonna be a few days in the middle where you're kind of like, oh, I kind of want to just skip to a different book. But no, you make it all the way through and you understand what happens at the end and it feels good to actually finish a book. So for a lot of my students, this was a, a milestone. This was probably the hardest book they've ever read and definitely the hardest book they've ever read from cover to cover. So depending on, you know, the population that you teach and the type of students that you have, um, you know, that might be not such a big deal, but for my students this was this was pretty massive. And I think vocabulary wise, critical thinking wise, reading comprehension wise, and just empathy wise, this was the best lesson that we did. We also watched the movie Go For Broke. We just kind of watch it intermittently throughout the time that we read the book and they loved that movie. It's from 1951. It's in black and white. I didn't think they were really going to like it, but it's about the 442nd Regimental Combat Unit that won more, they were the most highly decorated unit in World War II and they were trying to prove their loyalty to the, to the United States and my students understood that really well because we read about how Woody wasn't sure what he wanted to do and how there were um, some people who decided not to fight for the American side and some people who decided to do that and then they were amazing. So they loved that movie. I think they kept forgetting that this was real, that this really happened. And so to keep reminding them that like this is not a made up story, this is part of US history, um, they would just kind of be like fascinated over and over again like, oh yeah, this is something that really happened. So in conclusion, I think this is great. I think this is a great novel to do with a middle school class. Um, I think that this curriculum from Miss Teacher LA on Teachers Pay Teachers is great. I will use this for years to come. It was absolutely worth the $25 investment. I will leave a link below. I'll leave a link to this book. Um, there is a movie that was made in like 1974 or something like that and I wasn't able to access the movie someday. I would like to watch that, I guess. But the story is amazing, the history is amazing, the curriculum was amazing. This was my favorite thing that we did this year. And I just wanted to share it with you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. And if you're an English teacher, I hope this was useful to you. And I, I hope to do more videos like this. As much as I like talking about fashion and makeup and whatever, I really love talking about content and about teaching strategies and how students actually reacted to things and how <laughs> they worked or didn't work. So this is really fun for me. So thank you so much for watching and I hope to have another video like this for you soon. Mm -hmm.